Hi, I'm Daniel, and I should not be in charge of a little flower shop. Now, I say that with the best intentions uh, towards myself, because honestly, the idea of running a business is a really cool one to me. But I should not be in charge of anything with any sort of perishable stock, let alone something as fragile and beautiful as flower arrangements. Now, there was a brief period of time where I did balloon arrangements for a party supply store, which was one of the best jobs I ever had. Uh, not applicable. There's so much planning that goes into running a business, and, and this is something that I... Uh, realized after I married my wife whose dad had run his own business for her entire life. So she saw the ins and outs, you know, she saw the, the, the struggle with, you know, getting clients, running the running the work and managing the bills. And there's so much to it that I, I couldn't wrap my head around. And you know, just the idea of like, oh yeah, I'd love to run my own business, that'd be super cool. Uh, that's where the escapism of board games comes in and we're gonna be taking a look at a game that uh, touches right on that. And so I don't need to worry about killing flowers because it's pretty much impossible to do in this game we're looking at today. The Little Flower Shop is a game designed by Stephen Finn with art by Sarah Rye and Sebastian Kozner. It is a card-based drafting game. Each player is dealt a hand of seven cards. They then must select one card, and when everyone else has done so, reveal it and add it to either their shop, their storage, which can only hold a maximum of four cards, their till, uh, but only if it's money, their store display, if they have the appropriate base or the trash, if they have nowhere else to go with it. The game is played over the course of three rounds. During this time, players attempt to create the highest scoring flower shop. The potential cards that can be in a hand consist of vases, flowers, salary cards, or orders. On their turn, a player takes their hand and picks one card to keep. They then place the rest of the hand on the appropriate side of the player mat to be picked up by another player at the start of the next turn. Play continues until all cards have been depleted from the rotating hands, then another hand of seven cards is dealt. Vase cards can be placed on the player board, either along the bottom or from the suspended surface in the window. Flowers can be placed inside these vases as long as the picture on the front matches the arrangement. White lilies shown on the vases can be filled with any flower as a wild. Hanging baskets can be purchased if they're drawn. Once the dollar amount is paid to the bank, players may place up to three hanging baskets in their display. Salary cards can be taken and immediately added to the player's register. Order cards can be taken and fulfilled at any time to earn money. At the end of the three rounds, every card in your storage, as well as any empty vases in your shop, are sent to your trash. Each filled vase and hanging basket is worth a certain amount of points, and every $5 in your till is worth one point. For every two cards in your trash at the end of the game, you get negative one point. The player with the most points wins. Broadly speaking, this is a pretty standard set collection drafting game. I mean that in the best possible way. The mechanisms are familiar and easy to grasp, but as is the case with the best drafting games, the decisions can be tough. It's not as simple as trying to get the most of one type of card to complete sets, either. The matches, for the most part, must be very specific. You can't just toss any bouquet of flowers into any vase. Also, determining which flower to sell for an order, if any, is a difficult one because you're selling off potential points for money. Managing the storage space is tricky as well, but again, in a good way. It could be a little frustrating to get all the order cards only in the last round due to the way that the cards were shuffled, but there's no mitigating that in the rules. And that's the first problem. The dispersion of the types of cards can make for feast or famine rounds. It's hard to plan for the future with only four cards being able to go into storage. Now, I wouldn't change that number, but it can make for some uninteresting decisions if you know exactly what you need and you're just waiting turn after turn for it to show up. It's not a common occurrence, but it can be annoying when it happens. Like I said, this is pretty standard for a drafting game. You pick up a hand, you take one card, and you pass it on. There's a rule that allows you to buy a new card for the final card of the round, but nothing really earth-shatteringly new. And if you're okay with that, you're going to be just fine, especially if you like this genre of game. Another small gripe I have is that I wish that the order cards had some variety. As it stands, every order card in the game plays the same way. It would be nice to be able to have different types of orders that let you do different things like selling hanging baskets. All of that aside, this is a game that I really liked for a number of reasons. Now first off, the art is not only beautiful, it's quaint, and it's evocative of one of my favorite horror or musical films, uh, intentional or not. There's something to be said for themes that make you feel like you're doing something different. And for someone that currently works in IT, arranging flowers in my own little shop is just that. That thematic element is all that much more accentuated by the fact that you need careful planning to optimize your shop display. 
you're not just getting cards and slapping them down on the table. You have to be carefully choose cards and manage them in your shop, and it works really well. Balancing between getting the cards you need and keeping your eye on other players' displays is pivotal and necessary. I also want to point out that Dr. Finn has created a variant for this game that makes it not only playable, but really fun for two players. Rather than having the standard dummy players, you can have the flavor of a traditional drafting game. This is done with a simple rules change. After selecting a card for your shop, players each draw a card from the deck and then discard a card from the hand before passing it on. It's such a small change that makes gameplay much more elegant than having a dummy player. You get brand new information every turn, and the decisions on what to keep and what to toss are difficult and fun. The Little Flower Shop is not a grand production of flashy pieces or ideas, but it's a solid, beautiful little game that improves on a tried and true mechanism that's shown to be enjoyable and compelling. Dr. Finn has once again shown his skill at crafting a little game that can and should be enjoyed by a great number of people.